So Bombardier officially launched the C-Series all the way back in 2012. Essentially, it's a narrow-body, medium-range plane, and it was set to replace the older Boeing 737-300s and 400s, and also compete with other regional jets. Now, up to now, 402 orders have been made for both the 100 and the 300 model, and to some people, this is a sign of failure for the C-Series program. Now, the question and the topic that we want to explore is whether the C-Series is inherently flawed, and the reason why it hasn't overtaken the world as the company be it Airbus or Bombardier, whatever you choose, once said it would. So all the way back in 2008, both Bombardier and Embraer knew they needed something new. They saw that more fuel efficient aircraft were taking the reins and what they currently offered was essentially last century. Stiff competition ruled both companies, so Bombardier developed the C-Series and Embraer developed the E-195. Now both of these aircraft were pitched to the airlines. But if you're an airline that operates a fleet of regional planes, then it's going to be a very difficult choice to choose between the both. Bombardier claimed the C-Series was the most fuel-efficient aircraft in its group ever, and Embraer claimed the E-195 was the best plane for profit hunting. Now airlines such as the Legacy Carriers, Swiss Air Regional, and Azul Airlines all faced a similar problem. The planes in their fleet were running for many, many years, and it was time for a complete overhaul. But this is the time when it started to get all messy. Now Bombardier tried to sell the C-Series or the A220 when they found out they couldn't, and they tried to give it away. After Bombardier couldn't sell their planes, they paid Delta to take 75 of them, and it's reported that they only paid 20 million per plane when the cost of producing the plane is around 33 million dollars. Now Boeing got all finicky saying that the C-Series was competing against the 737 MAX program, and the government then placed heavy tariffs on the program, which essentially left them paralyzed. Now Airbus saw this as an opportunity. They already had a factory in the US where they build and deliver planes in that part of the world. So they decided to side with Bombardier against Boeing and build the C-Series in their own factories. Boeing then retaliated knowing that they were boxed in by Airbus and decided to side with Embraer. So how you have it at the moment is that two of the biggest plane companies playing dirty wars with each other and essentially ruining the companies that they've sided with. There's also the possibility that it can hurt the partnership between the two companies, but as long as they've got their planes, it's all good. But that's when it got really bad. All of the hard work and achievements went down the drain when the acquisition of Bombardier by Airbus was complete. Although the planes can now be made in the US, the appeal of the plane still remains tainted. Airlines either had the choice of a plane that's very expensive to operate, or a plane that's not very well known and it hasn't proven itself. This limited the choices that airlines could make when it comes to a replacement of their fleet. So a few airlines abandoned the idea altogether, such as Qantas, British Airways and also Singapore Airlines. Now don't get me wrong, the C-Series is a beautiful plane and it has great potential. But I don't believe it was right for Airbus to walk all over the program and essentially remove its soul. Most of the C-Series operators are either loyal to Bombardier or they're trying to get back our Boeing and Embraer. It does, however, allow the planes to be built in Alabama and avoid a good chunk of the tariffs by going under the Airbus name. But purchasing well over 50% of the company with the intention of seizing the program was a terrible mistake. This move has made Bombardier look like sellouts and also look very cheap. Now, even during the Farnborough Air Show, Embraer gained a substantial amount of orders. While the A220 received orders also, they essentially had to give them away due to the cost of manufacturing is considerably more than the selling price. They also dumped the A220s for $10 million or less than it cost to build, which is also an illegal practice. So as to the question as to whether the A220 is inherently flawed, well, I'll leave that answer to you guys. Today, Airbus is paying airlines to take the A220. But what will happen when Airbus figures out that the whole situation isn't working out for them? and they decide to start making parts or even selling the plane on Bombardier's behalf. It could leave a huge mess for the airlines that currently operate the plane. So guys, that's my take on it. Now I'm curious to know what you guys think about this. Please do share your thoughts in the comments below. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video and also consider subscribing and I hope to catch you guys in the next one.